Good evening, everyone, and this is Bishop Terence G. Strawn from Kingdom Builders Ministries welcoming you to another time where we, another opportunity to share in God's word. And listen, if you haven't done so already, we want you to like, share, tag, subscribe to those persons, family members, friends, welcome, welcome. Uh, just send out those those tags and, and shares just to tell them, come be a part of this time of studying in the word. Uh, the Bible declares that if we hide the word of God in our hearts, we will not sin. We, it'll keep us from sinning against God. And we just want to say a special hello. I see Rochelle Rhoda has joined us. Good evening. Uh, good evening to Delores, Joyan, and so many of you. Um, Jay, who have already said good evening. Uh, well, we're just excited to be here once again. I'm telling you, this is an awesome time to be in the body of Christ. This evening, we just want to continue uh, with our topic of qualified vessels, but we have a subtopic of what kind of fruit are you bearing? What kind of fruit are you bearing? So let us pray, Father, we just give you thanks and we give you praise and glory and honor, O oh God, and as we seek to examine your scriptures uh, and examine your word, we ask God that even as we uh, read and study that God, you will cause your light to shine on your word so that we might understand it, that we might indeed uh, meditate on it that it would change and transform us, that it will cause our people, your people, to walk circumspectly before you, with their, start, their steps being ordered by you. We thank you even now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight, O oh God, my strength and my redeemer. Father, we pray a special blessing on all of those who have joined us, all of those who are spread throughout the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, and by extension, the whole world. We speak of blessings on them, and we thank you, God, that your word will indeed uh, be embedded in their hearts so that we all will not sin against you. Bless this uh, time of Bible study. We give you praise, glory, and honor. For as in no other name but the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, amen and amen. Well, we're just so glad to have you again here. And as we said earlier, this evening's topic uh, or subtopic is what kind of fruit are you slash they, meaning the leaders, uh, bearing? What kind of fruits? Or what kind of fruit are you bearing? And we are coming from the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 7, verses 15 through 23. If you have your Bibles with you, uh, your phones or whatever it is that has the word of God in it, would you open it up to that portion of scripture, please? Uh, last week, we would have spoken, uh, indeed, from 2 uh, Timothy, chapter 2, and it was from verses 19 through 20. We spoke about how uh, God knows who belonged to him. Uh, we spoke about how Paul was given instructions to Timothy about how to live and how he should conduct himself. And if he remained pure and, uh, and if he remained true to the word of God, he would become a vessel of honor fit for the master's use. And uh, so to th this evening, we want to go a little further. So Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 23. And here's what it reads. Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit. That is, by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree can't. And a bad tree can't produce good fruit. 
So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions, true disciples. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name, and performed miracles, many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's law. And so as we continue on this journey of qualified vessels, and as we look at this portion of Scripture uh, we begin to see very quickly that Jesus himself was speaking about false prophets, false teachers, false uh, pastors, uh, false uh, prayer band leaders, or even false believers. Listen, this covers a whole myriad of people, but he is telling uh, the people that you've got to be very careful. I have never seen in my entire life such an outpouring of, of a spirit of destruction. I've never seen it in my life. I'm telling you, we've got to be on red alert. We've got to examine everything that is taught, everything, every prophetic word, every person. We've got to be ex exceptionally careful or extremely careful with, with what is being said and done under the guise of somebody being a Christian or somebody being a leader of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Remember now, when we looked last week, we said that those who could enter in are only the ones who have clean hands and a pure heart. And it is evident here that Jesus is declaring to his people, be very careful. There are many who are coming in my name and they are uh, wolves, but they have sheep clothing. In essence, they truly have come to eat you up alive, to to destroy you, to, to really pull you away from the, the, Lord, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself. And so he said, beware, because they come harmless. They seem unassuming. I like to say that they will tell you a little bit of truth and mix, mix up a whole pile of lies with it. And it gets us sometimes to the point well, and the thing is, and this is strange, because we know what is truth and we know what is a lie, but because we have this pre preconceived uh, notion that this is a man of God, this is a woman of God, and surely they wouldn't lead me astray, we then find ourselves just going along with the program, with what they're saying, and what they're saying has absolutely nothing to do with, with the kingdom of God. It has nothing to do with the worship and praise of our God. As a matter of fact, if we examine the church today, it seemed to be more about having institutions, having bylaws, having all kinds of, of uh, topics about how to get rich and how to invest in gold coins and, and bitcoins and all of these other things, uh, how to uh, invest in stocks and bonds, how to get um, as much money or be a millionaire or get uh, obtain a billionaire status. When none of that makes any difference, it has absolutely nothing to do with the kingdom of God. What 
Christ was, was specific about was simply this. He said, go into all the words, world, teach all nations, uh, tell them about me, spread my word all across, make disciples of men. And now, and that was it. It was about worship. It's always been about, it always been about personal relationship. But now we are fine. Uh, these, these groupings of people where you have to serve them and they're setting up their own personal kingdoms and you have to worship them and, and you have to, uh, man, listen, God's word declares that he's not going sh to share his glory with no man. And so we've got to be careful. We have got to be able to tell the difference between a wolf in sheep clothing and a true shepherd or sheep. So the first point is, how, or how can we identify them? The word simply says, by their actions. By their actions, we can identify them. Matthew ch chapter 7 verse 20 says, Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. Now, the thing is, if you are going to uh, identify somebody by their actions, it means then that you must spend time observing them. You, are, you cannot just... Uh, go according to how they act when they are in church. You've got to watch them. It's very hard sometimes to, to really determine what kind of tree is growing when it's in its infancy stage. But as it grow uh, bigger, you begin to see the features of what that tree is supposed to be. And the true sign of whether it's an apple or an orange tree, a mango tree, or it's just a shepherd needle tree is by the fruit that it produced. And by fruit, we mean, uh, as it relates to us as men and women of God, by their actions. And so how do we determine? How do we determine the fruit? The Bible says in the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 45, my God, it says, A good man out of good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, my God. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. In essence, when you really want to know what's happening, you got to understand everything begins in the heart. It just doesn't hit somebody. And so it's out of the abundance of what is in a man or woman's heart that their mouth speaks. Proverbs 4, uh, 23 says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And essence is saying, guard your heart, protect it, make sure you get the word of God in your heart. Make sure that whatever is being said or done by these wolves in sheep clothing, whether it be a, a leader, a pastor, or, or a teacher, or a a prophet or a prophetess, whatever it is or whoever it is, you've got to be careful that your heart is grounded and rooted in the word of God because there's a spirit of deception that has been released from the pits of hell against the church in a all-out attack by the devil to seek to pull or drag as many of the body of Christ away from the gospel of Jesus Christ as possible, as possible. But I've come to tell you, it's time for you to guard your heart. It's time for you to be diligent with guarding your heart because it's out of your heart where, where all of the issues of life comes. Psalms 119 verses 11 says, thy word, David says, have I what? Hid in my heart that I might what? 
not sin against you. In essence, if you hide the word of God in your heart, it will protect you. It will keep you from sinning against God. And so it's important for us. First step is to be able to understand that we've got to guard our heart. We've got to protect it. We've got to be sure that we are meditating on the word day and night. The Bible declares that when we do that, we will be like a tree planted by the river, which will bring forth its fruit in its season. I've come to tell somebody, you've got to guard your heart. Now watch this. Book of John, chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. Here's what it says. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lavishness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolish. Watch what it says. I, all these evil things come from within and defiles a man. So I'm here to tell you, man of God, woman of God, protect your heart. Protect it by staying in the word of God. Meditate on God's word day and night. Because when you do it, whenever a prophet or a, or a pastor or a, a, a bishop comes up with anything that contradicts what the word of God says. Because you have God's word in your heart, you can immediately tell and distinguish what it is and whether it lines up with God's word or not. And if it does not line up with word with the word of God, I'm here to tell you, man of God, woman of God, run for your life. Do not stay there because the problem with us is we have itchy ears syndrome in this season. Everyone wants a prophetic word. We want the prophetic word more than we want God. We want the, prof the prophetic word more than we want a relationship with God. We want a prophetic word and we want some stuff. We want money. Some of us want a relationship. We want all kinds of stuff, power and influence. We want and we long for all of these things. We desire for all of things more than the word of God. And all it takes is one false prophet, one false teacher to sow a seed, an evil seed in us. And we would run from the word of God. We know that what they're saying is wrong, but rather than us clinging to the word of God, we clinging to what? The prophet liar, the false teacher, or the false bishop is saying, and I'm here to tell you this evening, it's time for you to wake up, man of God, woman of God. Wake up because there is a bunch. You are surrounded. All of us are surrounded by wolves in sheep clothing. We've got to be very careful in this season to walk circumspectly before God. Guard your heart against the, the, the plots, the plans, and the schemes of the enemy. All of it is done to get us away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we've got to stay strong. So our point two is simply this. A follower of Christ always produces good fruit. A follower of Christ always produces good fruit. Watch what it says in 16 and verse 17 and 18. Can you pick grapes from a thorn bush or figs from a thistle? A good tree produces good fruit and a bad tree produces The, you cannot be mixed up. You cannot be deceived. The truth is simply this. A bad tree cannot bring forth good fruit. 
and a good fruit or a good tree cannot bring forth bad fruit. You can't get the wires crossed. Watch the men and women of God. Watch those who are around you who name the name of Christ. Watch how they live. Watch what they say. Watch their actions and what they do because that's the true test. Whatever they do, whatever they say, however they act is actually the real them. It's not, my God, my God. It's not them speaking in tongues on a Sunday morning in a worship service. It's not them praying those prayers, these and thousand and all that other stuff. God is not impressed by none of that. What he's impressed by is the way you live and the way you act and the way you conduct yourself. Because what you say when you quote scriptures, your life ought to line up in accordance with it. Man of God, woman of God, it's time for you to walk circumspectly before God. Stop living life straddling the fence. You got one foot on the left, one foot in the right, and the fence in the middle. You can tear yourself wide open. Either you live for Christ or you live for the devil. Either you live for Christ or you live for the world. But you cannot serve two masters. It's time for us to wake up. It's time for us to understand that we ought to be bearing good fruit. We've got to bear good fruit. So how does a follower of Christ bear good fruit? How does he uh, do this? How does she do that? So here's what James 1, 22 through 23 says. The first thing we got to know is those who bear fruit do the will of God. Those who bear fruit, they do or carry out the will of God. And James 1, 22 through 23 says, but don't just listen to God's word. Come on. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourself. I got to put a break on there. The truth is the only one you really fool it is yourself. <laughs> you here trying to do all kinds of stuff. But at the end of the day, you can't just be hearing the word of God. Some of us, all we do is we listen, we hear the word of God. It goes through one ear and out the next. But I've come to tell you this evening, the body of Christ, that we have got to get to the point where we understand that Christ expects us to be doers of the word. Do us is a verb. It's an action word. It means that we got to be out there representing Christ. The word of God says that when men see our good works, then they will begin to glorify our father, which is in heaven. Verse 23 says, for if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it is like glancing at your face in the mirror. You see yourself walk away and forget what you look like. You've got to become doers in this season. Your time for just listening to the word and just hearing the word, that's over and done with. It's time for you to get busy in doing the word of God. Jesus said, I must work the work of God while it is day for the night will come when no man can work. I've come to tell you that when you're on the job, whenever you can, take the opportunity to be doers of the word. While you are indeed driving in your car, make sure you are doers of the word. That no matter what company you're in, friends, some of our friends really don't even know how deep and how saved we are because we try to fit in with them so much rather than just doing God's word. Tell them about the love of Jesus Christ. Tell them that Christ is soon to come. Tell them that if they don't get their life right, they will find themselves in hell. Tell them, tell them, tell them, but we've got to be doers of God's word. The next thing I want us to understand 
that distinguishes us as followers of Christ is that we have got to begin, my God, to keep the commandments of God. John chapter 14, verse 15 says, if you love me, obey my commandments. The world is tired of hearing us say that we are saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, but we on the job trying to steal from the, the company. We are out, 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 out there in the world, in the community, and the things that we are doing are totally contrary to the word of God. What we are not doing is living and loving Jesus Christ by keeping his commandments. If it says, thou shall not steal, thou shall not lie, whatever it is, you've got to understand that the only people who truly love Jesus, the only people who are truly followers of Christ are those who keep his commandments. You can't be sneaking this way and sneak in that way. You can't have personal agendas. It ought to always be about God. It shouldn't be about nothing else. The, uh, my God, my God, help me somebody. You've got to stop uh, uh, indeed taking on the world systems. And we've got to stop that in our church. And we've got to get back to the old landmark. We've got to understand that loving Christ is keeping his commandments. It's, it's following his commandments. It's living a life where we are no longer a slave to sin. It's about keeping and, and walking circumspectly before God. I've come to tell somebody, you've got to keep the commandments. You can't be going up the river one day and, oh my God, you've got to be steady. You've got to be consistent consistent. You've got to continue to walk in accordance to the perfect will of God, because if you don't do that, then you're not a lover of Jesus Christ. And if you're not a lover of Jesus Christ, then you're not a disciple of him. And those, my God, my God, who are true disciples will keep and would love Jesus by keeping his commandments. Bible declares, that if a man follow after me, let him deny. Jesus said this. Let him deny himself. Pick up his cross and follow after me. I'm telling you, man, we have fallen so far away from keeping God's commandments. But when we keep Christ's commandments, the teachings of Christ, when we keep the Lord's commandments, that's the only, that's the measuring stick by which God knows how much we love him. The next thing I want us to understand about really the, the true follower or disciple of Jesus Christ is the fact that we've just got to plain old remain in Christ. Mm. John 15, 4 through 8 says, remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. My Lord, my Lord. Yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them, watch this now, will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who do not remain in me is thrown away, my Lord, like a, a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my word remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples, my God. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my father. I've come to tell you, people of God, 
The problem with us is we have replaced Jesus Christ with our pastors. We have replaced Jesus Christ with our prophets. We have replaced Jesus Christ with our bishops and our apostles. I'm here to tell you that the only person that you need to be attached to, the only person you need to remain attached to is the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ himself. Because the Bible declares that when you remain to the connected to the vine, it says that whatever you ask, you would be granted. The problem with us is some of us, our prayers are not being answered right now because we are disconnected from the vine. We want to connect to this one and connect to that one. We want to connect to everyone, but rather than remaining connected to Christ Jesus, oh my God, help me, Holy Ghost. The truth of the matter is, as long as our power is connected oh my god to the plug in our house as long as the computer is connected to it as long as the cake mixer is connected to it as long as what whatever it is that your what tv is connected to the plug and as long as bpl is producing power you will be able to utilize that item which connects to it but oh god God, help me, Lord, if that power cable is disconnected from the plug, I don't care what you do. You could pray till the cows come home. That piece of equipment ain't going to work. You could pray till for the TV to come on. But as long as the power, the cable is not connected, it will not come on. I've come to tell somebody that if you remain connected to Christ, when you pray, whatever it is that you ask, it will be given to you. But, but, but you've got to become a follower of Christ. And to become a follower, you've got to remain in Christ. And when you remain in Christ, this, 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 this verse says you would produce much fruit, not just one. You would produce much fruit. And then you would be considered as a true disciple. This brings great glory to the Father. Oh, my God. Watch this. Deuteronomy. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 13, verses 1 through 4. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 13, verses 1 through 4. Watch what it says. Suppose there are prophets among you or those who dream dreams about the future. And they promise you signs or miracles. And the predicted signs or miracles occur. If they then say, come, let us worship other gods, gods you have not known before, do not listen to them. The Lord your God is testing you to see if you truly, my God, love him with all your heart and your soul. Serve only the Lord your God and fear him alone. Obey his commands. Listen to his voice and cling to him. You all hear this, people of God? We got so much prophets out there. This one prophesying storm and rain and hurricane. The next one prophesying doom and gloom. Everybody all of a sudden saying, the Lord say, my God, I've come to tell somebody this evening. I remember in the Old Testament where the word of God says that these people come and they said, I have said this and I've said that. When I've said no such thing, I've come to tell the people of God today. Listen, you've got to remember, serve only the Lord your God. You've got to remember, fear him alone. Oh my God. You've got to remember, obey his commands. Listen to his voice. Cling to him. Don't let him go. 
The devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But I've come to tell you tonight, if you draw close to God, if you draw close to Christ, he will draw close to you. Watch out for these people. Be very careful. Beware. They are wolves in sheep clothing. You've got to understand in this season that everything that is being taught, everything that is being preached has got to line up with an in accordance to God's word because that's our measuring stick. My God, here's the other thing I want you to know. Those persons who are truly followers, disciples of our Lord and Jesus Christ, and who would produce much fruit, they bear the fruit in keeping with repentance. They bear the fruit in keeping with repentance. Matthew chapter 3, verse 8 says, Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Some of us have a nasty habit in saying they said they just got some stuff they've got to be delivered from. But I've come to tell you this evening that the true, the true follower of Christ is bearing fruit in keeping with repentance. It says that you ought to live your way, that it proves that you are truly turned away from the sins that you operated in. Stop practicing sin anytime you're committing the same sin over and over and over again. You're not bearing fruit in keeping with repentance. My God, I've come to tell somebody that you are a slave to sin if you're committing the same sins over and over again. Repent, man of God. Repent, woman of God. Your life ought to line up in accordance with the word. You can't be preaching in the pulpit and then doing stuff behind the scenes, my God. You can't be a, a prophesying and doing all kinds of stuff. And the foul stuff that is coming out your mouth is not becoming of a man of God or a woman of God. It's time for you to repent. A true disciple of God will bear the fruit, my God, my God, of, of keeping and keeping with repentance. You cannot, you cannot, the Bible declares, by their fruits, you will know them. So if you ain't bearing fruit and keep it with repentance, then that means it disqualifies you from being a vessel of honor. Listen, listen. A true follower, of, a, a true disciple of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My God. Stay, always stay away from ungodly people who masquerade as believers. Oh my God, I need to say that again. True followers of Christ, true disciples of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, learn the value of staying away from ungodly people who masquerade as believers. My Lord. Second Timothy chapter 3. Verses 2 through 5. Here's what it has to say. For people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They would consider nothing sacred, my God. They will be unloving, unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. Come on, somebody. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends. They will be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasures rather than God. 
they will act religiously, but they will reject the power, my God, that could make them godly. Here's a warning to all of us. Stay away from people like that. Stay away. This is in the word. NLT version, 2 Timothy 3, 2 to 5. The verse 5 says, they will act religiously, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away, my God. I can't say that enough. Stay away from people like that. I've come to tell us that we've got to be careful. It ain't that we don't know these people. We know who they are. We know how they operate. Anytime they fall into this category with 2 Timothy, Paul wrote to Timothy and described them to a T. You ain't got to look far. This ain't deep. You, you could stay right in the shallow and, and pick out some people immediately who fall into this category. And the Bible declares, stay away from them. My God, run man of God. Run woman of God. Stay away from them. Don't hang around them. Don't invite them into your house. My God, the problem with them is simply this. They know the way. They understand what it is, what they're supposed to be doing. They know how they're supposed to live. But rather than do that, they are all about trying to manipulate, control, and pull other people into the same sins that they are committing because they want to be comfortable in doing what they're doing. Mind of God, let your light shine. God has called you the light of the world. Woman of God, you are the light in this dark world. It ought to be so that when you show up, that they are uncomfortable. It ought to be so that when you show up, they, they, they're the ones that run running away. It ought to be when you show up that the Holy Ghost will convict them and they will cry out to the Lord and ask for forgiveness. My God, you can't, you got to be careful. You can't be around people. You cannot fellowship with people like that. You've got to separate yourself. Run from them. Run from them. Stay away from them. My God, my God. Here's what we got to understand. People who are true followers, and true disciples of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, displays the characteristics of Christ. Here are some of the characteristics. Love and compassion. My God, it seems as if that's gone out of, out of the house of God. Love and compassion. You've, we've got to learn how to love because that's a fruit. Love is a fruit. Love and compassion. Passions for soul rather than self-satisfaction and achievements. The problem with us is in the body of Christ is we, we ain't care about those souls no more. Ain't nobody want to go out and win souls for Christ. The word of God declares that the fields are white. The harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. Jesus instructed his disciples, call and pray for the laborers. I've come to tell us we've got to get back on track. It ain't about how much members you have. It ain't about how much, how good the praise team could sing. It really ain't about nothing else that we put so much emphasis on. It's about souls. It's about showing love and compassion to those who are around us. It's about total submission to God. We have got to remember these are the things that causes us to bring forth fruit and much fruit. Here's what the Bible declares in Galatians 5, 22 through 23. It says, it says this, but the Holy Spirit, produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, 
joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And watch this. Then, 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 then Paul says this. There is no law against these things. In essence, when you display these things, you fall under the category of what it means to be a believer or somebody that's producing good fruit. Oh, my God. We've got to learn how to walk in accordance with the Holy Ghost. It ain't just about speaking in tongues. It's about these different, my God, fruits that are displayed out of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We've got to learn how to walk in accordance to this. There's another thing we've got to understand. Every tree that does not produce good fruit <laughs> will be destroyed. My God, my God. As a matter of fact, every tree that does not produce fruit also will be destroyed. Matthew 7 verse 19. So every tree that does not produce good fruit. I want you to see this. I didn't write this. This is in the word. The Lord Savior Jesus Christ said it himself. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. I've come to tell you right now that if you ain't producing any fruit, my God, my God, if you're not producing good fruit, if rather than having a spirit of joy and peace, you have a spirit that is so cantankerous that nobody wants to be around you. Jesus, help me. If you have a bad, stinking attitude, if, 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 and you're still masquerading as someone who is saved, I've come to tell you, you need to get saved. Because they are not the fruits that is expected of those who have indeed or are producing the fruits of the Spirit. And the Bible says, Jesus himself says, that every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and burnt in the fire. Here's what Deuteronomy 13 verse 5 says about the false prophet and false dreamers. Who, 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 now get this now. You got to understand this, this, this thing deep, this thing really deep. The first part of Deuteronomy 13, 1 through 4, says that this prophet of, of, of prophetess prophesied and the sign or the miracle came to pass. It came to pass. But then God said, if they Indeed, say to you, come, let us go worship other gods. Then God said to run away from them. Here's what verse 5 says. But that prophet or that dream of dreams shall be put to death because he has taught rebellion against the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of slavery to make you leave the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. So you shall purge yourself uh, from the evil in your midst. I've come to tell you, I don't care how much things they prophesied and was true. I don't care what sign, what miracle, whatever the case is. If you've been observing them, and you've seen some of their actions and their word does not line up in accordance to the word of God. And, and it's a threat from you remaining connected to the vine. Break off running. Run for your life. You don't want to be around them. As a woman, they say, purge yourself. That one should be put to death. Purge yourself. 
from the evil in your midst. My God, Matthew 3 verse 10 says, even now the ax of God's judgment is poised and ready to surveil the roots of trees, my Lord. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. I want you to consider this as we wrap this all up and bring this to a close. Here's what I want you to understand. Your gifts and abilities will not qualify you to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You could prophesy and everything come to pass. You could cast out demons. You could speak in tongues. You could be the most prolific preacher, a uh, prayer warrior, whatever you want to call yourself. But none of those gifts and abilities will get you into the kingdom of heaven. Here's what Matthew 7 verse 21 3 says. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Oh my God. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter, my God. On Judgment Day, this is Jesus talking. I want you to understand this. On Judgment Day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We cast out demons in your name. We perform very many miracles in your name. But here's what Jesus' response is. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who broke or break God's law. I'm telling you, we started out by saying, beware. Beware, beware man of God, beware woman of God, watch out for these false prophets, teachers, my God, it's prosperity gospel, my God, all kinds of tricks and, and strategies and, and all kinds of stuff to try and, 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 and bring wealth because the more money you make, they, they want you to give more so that they can have more, so that they can enjoy themselves. But I've come to tell you, man and woman of God, watch it. Watch how they live. Watch how they act. Watch how they treat their own people and one another. Watch them. Because by their fruits, you will be able to identify them. You will be able to know exactly whether they are real men or, and women of God or they are fake. I'm telling you, what's in the heart has got to come out. They could try play as saved as they want. They could speak in all kind of tongues. They could, they could perform all kind of miracles. But sooner or later, you're going to see the real them. It will come out of them and you'll be able to determine whether they are really men and women of God or whether they are wolves in sheep clothing. Because a true disciple bear, always bears good fruit. A true disciple and follower of Christ is not perfect, my friends and my family in Christ. They're not perfect. They make mistakes. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But for us, we confess our sins because when we confess our sins, the Bible declares he's faithful and just to forgive us from all of our sins and cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. Get away 
from those who dis display those 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 bad fruits, those those diseased fruits, the fruits that that indeed are contradictory to the word of God. Be careful. Do not allow yourself to be deceived in this hour. It's time for us to begin to walk in the wisdom of God, understanding and knowing that the devil is after us. His plan is to sift us. His plan is to entrap us. His plans is to destroy us so that we might be a part of him and his angels serving or, or, or being thrown in hell. But I've come to declare to the body of Christ that it's time for us to wake up. Stop allowing yourself to be deceived. Wake up. Study the scriptures for yourself. Look at the way these people around you and the leaders are living. And if it's not in accordance with the word of God, I'm going to tell you, run for your life. Because your life depends on it. After you would have done all you can, remain in Christ Jesus. Remain in the vine. Because, because when you stay connected to the vine, my God, then you will sure that you will see our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And you would hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on up and I'll make you ruler of many things. This is Bishop Terrence G. Strong from Kingdom Builders Ministries praying that you would hear these words, not only hear them, receive them, and that you would be diligent in indeed watching the actions of those who call themselves men and women of God because you would be able to identify them by their fruits. Blessings to you, I pray that you will indeed grow in the grace of the Lord, that you would indeed learn to distinguish the difference between those who are wolves and those who are sheep, that you would indeed in this season, in this dispensation, walk circumspectly before God understanding what time the time is because Christ is soon to come. God bless you. May he keep you. May his face shine upon you. And may he give you his peace. This is Bishop Terrence G. Strawn, again, from Kingdom Builders Ministries, telling you to be a qualified vessel of honor. You've got to bear good fruits. Good evening and God bless you.